Forget about your baby Christianity. You can't save a generation. We are looking at how our lives can affect generations to come. And in the days to come, when they are mentioning the archives of men that work with God, they can mention you. The way you are living your life right now, if they can remember Christians in Nigeria, you may not be counted. Talk more people that will be remembered in generation to come. Everyone will die one day. What will you be remembered for? Your testimony of your working with God. Let the time come that they will say, this ones, their name is not worthy to be put in the books. They have conquered the bondage and the oppression and now they stand. If you can conquer the devil, how can you conquer it for other people? You see why the battle is fierce for you? Because the devil knows that when you are out, every other person will be out in your family. Because all of us here are representative of our family. All of us here are different names. Names! Either you are bearing the name of your father, the name of your mother, the name of your husband. There are all kinds of identities. And each and every of those identities are covenant parties. And that is why our parents have idols. And yet again, we are partakers of their iniquities. Just because your father did an excavation in the realm of the spirit through an altar in darkness and you are sleeping now, you are seeing the same encounter. Just because he came from a village in somewhere in Benue State and you are sleeping, the demons of those villages are coming to you. What concerns you with those villages? Your identity, your name is peculiar to you. Just because you came from Kabu, as you are sleeping, some spirit came and said, we are part of you. From where? Oh, oh your great-grandparents serve us and while they were serving us, they dedicated you and your entire clan to us. So one must wake up and repair. So Exodus is a forceful rebellion against the system of darkness. It began with Moses. It didn't end with Moses. It continued. And I've come to tell you that miracle service such as this is a moment of rebellion. We are going to be rebelling against any code and court that the devil has plotted in us and it has been functioning. No programming of darkness should ever prosper. If you allow it to prosper, it's because you are casual in the days of war. And in the days of war, those that are casual die first. They are the ones that they speak about them. After we went, this was die before we even began. Straight bullet took them off. The visions and the dreams that God is giving to you will not just come to pass because your name is Joshua. It won't even come to pass because your name is Deborah. It will come to pass because you have war. And now you have conquered the taskmasters. You have conquered the oppressors. Because they have been given the privilege and the right to put tax upon you that will cause you pain. This night is a moment of rebellion. When you go to the book of Exodus 14, I'm trying to find a place so that we can begin praying and take the communion because Exodus 14, Exodus 14 from 8. The Bible says, And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with an high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them. All the horses and the chariot of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them encamping them by the sea see no oppressor will let you go like that don't be thinking that one day the devil will not mind you you are joking devil his business is to mind people you can never wake up and say devil will not disturb you what do you mean he's looking for who to disturb the Bible says his job description is that he removed, he moved what? To and fro the earth, looking for, he's just looking for something. I am assuring you, he'll find you one day. I know he has not found you yet. Maybe that's why you can't play well. He will find you one day. Because one day, his dagger will appear. And that dagger can come directly towards your head. And as you are running, he's pursuing you. You will now realize there's a way to our side. Come on! Because until you turn back and face the adversary, you cannot conquer until one person was willing to stand up and say let my people go everybody remain in bondage and even when the lord wanted to let the people go 
the people don't want to allow them go and the bible says it was even god himself that hardened the heart of pharaoh that means sorry to say this my message is not sweet it means that even god can permit some things to happen i get to my point now just so that his glory can be revealed but in the midst of those happenings, sometimes the glory will be lost because the vessel through which the glory is supposed to be revealed cannot be able to handle the operation that can bring the glory. How many of us, God, pass us through process we fail God? God just allow one little thing to happen, little temptation, little, we can't survive little temptation. The Bible says, he that is faithful in little, that God will give him much. So when God wants to permit temptation to occur to you, what it does is that he permits certain things that are normal, to God, this thing is not hard. You should be able to overcome it. But suddenly, how are the mighty falling? How, how is it that the bow of the mighty men are broken? How? Because when the immortals look upon from heaven, they say, this thing is not matter now. You should be able to overcome it. For in the stature that you have in the spirit, from according to the code of operations and the books in the realm of the spirit, this one is beyond you. But they look upon you physically and they wonder who is man that thou art mindful of him why because he has been consistent in failing you and god is hoping daily knowing fully well that there's a possibility he put inside man that man can be able to survive the fearless and be able to procreate after him men are given the privilege to bet gods you see what i'm doing my authority my strength you can carry the same times five if you have sufficient capacity you can carry times ten why because god is the only one that has the ability to transfer himself into others because the intention of god is that all of us became living gods walking upon the face of the earth nobody was designed to live an inferior and a shadow life if you live that you choose it everyone was designed to shine and there is no amount of shining that will intimidate god because he permits you to shine from the very first place because all of us dwell in darkness his light emanates in us and we begin to express so a time will never come when god will look upon you and be jealous of you because you are nothing thou art the anointed cherub thou cover it why because i have set you so there is no one under the government of god that god did not set him no one and if you observe if it was the plan of God that mankind should live an inferior life in slavery and in bondage, why would God created many stars and all the stars are shining? Do you know that one star can be as big as, big as Lafayette, even not times five? One star! And if you look upon the sky, you will see billions of stars. And in their numbers, all of them are shining. No one stops shining because another is shining. It means God has apportioned unto everyone the privilege to rule and dominate everywhere they find themselves. If you are not, there is something you are not applying or you have not yielded to the government of God sufficiently well. 